Hi, this is Mrs. Often, and today we're going to be talking about finding the angle between two vectors. So you see my beautiful drawing, I have two boats that are sailing away from each other, and we might be wondering, what is the angle between these two boats? Maybe we're not, but today we will wonder. So sometimes we need to find the angle between two vectors. And there are two different ways that you can do this. One of them involves a formula, but we'll get to that part second. Because the first thing that you could do is find the direction angle for each vector and just subtract the larger direction angle, subtract the smaller direction angle. So I've drawn two vectors here. Vector u has component form 3, negative 7. And vector v has component form negative 7, negative 3. As you can see, vector u is in quadrant 4 and vector v is in the third quadrant. So I'm going to find the direction vector for each of these vectors, or I'm sorry, the direction angle for each of these vectors, and then subtract. So for u, the tangent of my direction angle is equal to negative 7 over 3, y over x. And if I do the inverse tangent of negative 7 over 3, I get negative 66.8. So the direction angle for u is 360 minus 66.8, or 293.2. So I'll put theta subscript u is 293.2. Two degrees. I'll go through the same process with V. And for V, I have negative 7 over negative 3. The inverse tangent of that is going to be positive 66.8. Now this would be very good, except that V is in quadrant 3, and this is a quadrant 1 angle. So I have to add 180 degrees, that's 66.8, and I get 246.8 degrees. So at this point, I can take my two direction angles, 293.2 and 246.8, and just subtract them. And I'll get negative, or, or I'm sorry, I'll get positive 46.4 degrees. Now here's where I think it's really helpful that I made this drawing because I can see that this is an acute angle but not really, really tiny. So my answer of 46.4 degrees seems to me to be a pretty reasonable one. Okay, this method, as long as you remember how to find a direction angle, you can always use. And I do suggest that you draw a picture when you're working with direction angles. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to figure them out. Now, I also could use a formula, and unfortunately, my drawing got a little bit mushed here, so I'm going to rewrite the formula real quick. And it says cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u with v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So we're going to use the same vectors and just verify that this formula will give us the same answer. Now keep in mind here that this formula isn't directly giving us theta, the angle between the two vectors. It is giving us cosine of theta. Once we've evaluated that, we're going to calculate inverse cosine to get the exact answer of the angle between the vectors. But the first thing I'm going to do is the dot product. Okay, u dotted with v, uh, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 
7 times negative 7, or negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. So u dotted with v is 40. Okay, so cosine of theta is equal to 40. Then I'll calculate the magnitude of each of the vectors. For the magnitude of u, I have 3 squared plus negative 7 squared, and that gives me the square root of 58. For v, I have negative 3 squared plus negative 7 squared, and that also gives me square root of 58. So my numerator is going to have 40. My denominator is going to be square root of 58 times square root of 58. Fortunately, square root of 58 times square root of 58 is just 58. So I will skip the step of showing you 40 over 58 and just divide 40 by 58. Okay, to four decimal places, that is 0 0.6897. To find my value of theta, I'm going to do inverse cosine of this. And I get an answer of theta equals 46.4 degrees. So using the same vectors that I had before, I got 46.4 degrees. And just reaching back to my previous slide, you can see here, I also got an answer of 46.4 degrees. It doesn't matter which method you use. You should use the one that you feel better with and the one that you remember at the time. But again, I think it's so helpful to draw a picture. Now one thing that can be important about vectors, particularly in statistical applications of vectors, is the idea of orthogonal and parallel vectors. This is also important for force vectors. Orthogonal vectors are at a 90 degree angle to each other. So they're perpendicular to each other. Parallel vectors are vectors that when they are written in component form are scalar multiples of each other. So for example, your standard unit vectors i and j are orthogonal. One's on the x-axis, one's on the y-axis. Two vectors like say 2, 2, and 4, 4 are parallel vectors because if I take the first vector and double it, I'll get the second vector. How do we determine if two non-zero vectors are parallel or orthogonal? So here's my test for parallel vectors. I'm given my vector u, u1, comma u2, and v, v1, comma v2. I divide v1 divided by u1, v2 divided by u2. Are those two values equal to each other? If so, the vectors are parallel. If not, maybe they're orthogonal. I can go on and find the dot product of the vectors. If the dot product of the vectors is equal to zero, then the two vectors are orthogonal. If neither one of these is true, we say they're neither, because vectors don't have to be parallel or orthogonal. You could have two vectors that go like this. Oh, they're almost parallel. They're definitely not orthogonal. But we just say that they're neither. OK, so ratio of the components being the same and dot product equal to 0 will help you in determining if vectors are parallel or orthogonal. So I have two pairs of vectors here. We're going to determine if each pair is parallel, orthogonal, or neither. So first, I'm going to test for parallel vectors. 
Now, if you can already see how this will turn out, don't ruin the surprise. Try it on your own anyway, just for practice. I'll divide V1 divided by U1, 1 over 5. V2 divided by U2, negative 5 over 1. Okay, I think we can see these are not equal. So, not parallel. Let's try orthogonal. For orthogonal vectors, we'll use the dot product. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. This adds up to 0. That means that the two vectors are orthogonal. If we were to plot these, you would see that they do make a right angle with each other. My next sample, u is 210 and v is negative 4, negative 20. So again, I'll first test to see if they're parallel. V1 divided by U1 is negative 4 divided by 2. And I want to see if the, is that equal to negative 20 divided by 10. Well, I can reduce both of these fractions. They look equal. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 20 divided by 10 is also negative 2. Since these are equal, they are parallel vectors. Since they're parallel vectors, I'm not going to go on and test for the vectors to be orthogonal because if two vectors are parallel, then they'd lie right on top of each other. They're not going to make a right angle with each other. Um, you only go on and try if parallel doesn't work, try orthogonal. If orthogonal doesn't work, then they're neither parallel nor orthogonal. So that is the direction angle between two vectors and determining if vectors are parallel, orthogonal, or neither.